Hi, I'm Spencer Ziegler. Hi, I'm Melissa Smith. And welcome to Data Lit, a podcast for educators by educators. So can you believe it, Spencer? We have been picked up for yet another season. Yay! Yeah. But those are the writers and actor strikes. They need to fill the air with something. So, yeah, we're lucky. I guess in. that's the good thing when you're writing for yourself, right? You can either choose to strike or not choose to strike. <laughs> yeah, it's right? a two person strike, if so. <laughs> so, I want to thank our listeners for keeping us afloat again yes. because of your um, listen, listenership? listenership. Listenership? Listenership. Is that a word? Yeah, but we don't have that many listeners. So, maybe it's more like a listener dinghy. You know, listener <laughs> robo. <laughs> so due to our many, many, don't say that. Due to yeah. our many, many listeners, you have kept us going. And so we want to thank you for that and keep listening. And so in our fourth season, we're hoping to bring you a little bit more of what have we been doing. And again, we are always open to new ideas, to tweaking it, because again, this is for you. So we want to make sure that we are tuning into your needs and giving you what it is that you need. So yeah, let's start since the beginning of a new season by reviewing just what is the purpose of this podcast. All right. So I, I got a, a kind of sentence frame. I fill in the, the blank for you. All right. Um, data lit is meant to teach blank about blank. All right. So data lit is meant to teach anyone who uses data or information about what it means to make sense of that data or information to suit their needs or context. Oh, I like that. I like that. Now, I noticed you didn't say teachers or educators. So why is that? So I'm trying to make sure that even though we say it's a podcast for educators, by educators, Mm -hmm. I don't want to define what an educator is, right? An educator is not just a person in a classroom, right? It's anybody who is educating someone. And I think anyone in that role can find value in what we are, what information we're giving or what, what professional learning we're providing. I like that. And that, that's something that, that has stood out to me throughout the course of uh, producing this, this podcast is just educational data isn't inherently different from other forms of data. Correct. The same stuff they think about of collecting different types of data and through different assessment methods and bringing that data into different types, all, all that. It applies just as much to like me as a parent or friend or all these kind of things, you know, everything is data. So approaching it in an analytical way is going to help you as a teacher. It's going to help you as a, you know, baker. We did an episode talking about that, whatever it might be. So I like your, your definition. And remember when um, at the beginning of the pandemic, we took that course about data literacy and Mm -hmm. that was really meant not for teachers, but for anybody. And the way they talked about data as information uh, that has stuck with me, and I try to re- try to remember that and use that context, which is why I said data and information. Because again, constantly, whether you're on a bus, you're here at work, you're traveling, we're constantly receiving yeah. data or information and processing it and using it. And so I think a lot of the things that we talk about, even though there's a sort of school based context, you can still use a lot of the skills. Yeah, like you said, it, it you know you can use what we are providing as a parent, as a baker, any walk of life, you can do that because you're constantly interacting with data. Yeah. And that, that makes me think of, okay, you know, when we were going to school and we would have a research paper or something like that, the issue was just not enough information. You'd go to the library and hope that there would be a book that would kind of, you know, fit what you're, you're, you're looking into. Right. Yeah. And then at a certain point it flipped and now kids have the inverse for a problem where it's just too much information and they have to be able to like cipher through and figure out. I feel like that's somewhat similar with data perhaps that now the, the blessing and curse in education and in life is that we're inundated with data and we have to be able to pick out. Yeah, like you said, it, it strikes me that that you're not thinking of it just as teachers, that as parents, too, as we roll out Canvas and all these things, we have access to a lot more data. So the skills that you brought about, that you point out, what was the end of your sentence again? Making sure to make it make sense for the context that they're in, right? So yeah. regardless of where you are, what you are, you're going to be using information or data. So we all need to make sense of it. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Applies just as much to a superintendent as to a teacher, as to a kid who's monitoring their, their upcoming basketball uh, progress or something. Yeah. So what about you? What, how would you fill in data lit is about? Yeah. So 
I'll say I like your definition better, but I will throw mine out there for the sake of uh, balance. Yeah, that's... (laughs) Yeah, I want to thank that because I lost. Uh, Data Lit is meant to teach educators about how understanding and analyzing data can make our instruction and assessment more effective. Oh, I like that too. So yeah, mine was um, yeah a little bit more education focused. But again, we didn't say, neither of us said specifically teachers or Wake County right. teachers. Right. We, we aim for this to be accessible for anyone interested in education. Though, of course, our, our primary focus is just Wake County pays the bills. That's what we're hoping specifically. Yes, that's yes. Right. Yeah. But again, you said the word educators and I said anyone, mm-hmm. right? So again, because we don't want to limit what and who an educator can be. Yeah. So yeah. I think we're both on the same track. Yep. 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 That All works. Right. So what kind of episodes are we going to be doing this season? I kind of alluded to that we're trying to do the same. So yeah. And I, I find that there's kind of three buckets of episodes that we tend to do. So we'll talk about each one, and I think they'll prepare um, listeners for what might be ahead for this season. Um, So the first type tends to be you and I grappling with research on a educational data topic. So it would be kind of, because this thing is that, especially classroom teachers, they have so much on their plate. Um, And some of this education can, uh, educational research can be dense, so if we're able to take a complicated topic and to kind of break it down into a little 20 minute snippet that'll work for a commute, then we hope that has some values for, for our listeners. So what are, what, are some epi- what are some examples of these types of episodes, would you say? So I remember when we did the data types, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's yeah. a kind of big one that, you know, folks are always like, well, what are the different data types? And so we talked about, you know, the, the qualitative versus quantitative. We also yeah. did the data types in terms of the data measures where we talked about the student learning kinds of ones. And then I know another one that we're thinking of grappling is it it sounds, you hear very often. And so we're thinking, okay, let's, I wonder what it would look like to have an episode. And that's about the four C's, right? That's pretty big. I think it's part of our strategic plan. You kind of hear it all the time. So we're hoping to, you know, spend some some time grappling with what does that mean and what does it look for for Mm -hmm. educators? Yeah. And listeners, if there is a topic that you've always wanted to learn a little bit more about, but you might not necessarily have the time, we are, you know, we are professional geeks. It's our job <laughs> to dive deep into some of this and, and share it with you. So let us know. All right. So that's the, the first type. Then the second type often um, is when it's somewhat related, but we'll bring in an expert on this topic yeah. and it's more than an interview setup. So we know enough to ask the questions, but we bring in someone else (laughs) that's going to have the answers. Yeah, we know our limits. Yeah, yeah, that's that is accurate. Um, So what are some examples of these types of episodes? Right. So um, I remember when we 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 were very fortunate to get Sue Brokart Mm -hmm. uh, to come in and talk to us. And then I'm very, very excited that we got to talk to a psychometrician. I've always wondered what their work is like. So we're going to be doing that. And then another buzzword that we hear a lot about is uh, AI, artificial yeah. intelligence. So we're hoping to talk to someone in that area as well to kind of give our listeners a taste of what that looks like. Yep. Yep. So those are interviews. Then we have another type of episode that's also an interview type, but um, it's a little bit different how we approach it. And those are our data bites episodes. So for these, it's the same set of questions. And we're asking any number of different people connected to education in some way. Um, So those questions, you know, what does data literacy mean to you? What's some data you interact with? What's a surprising fact about the data that you work with that you want to share with our listeners? And what's some data that you wish you had? Um, but you don't. So these I enjoy because it's the same set of questions, but by talking to different people, we get a sense of what's similar and different with how we approach data. So what are some examples of these? So the ones that I remember is like when we, t- we have so far talked to uh, someone in our security department, mm-hmm. right? To kind of get a sense of what data that they look at. But I don't want folks to think that it's only uh, central services staff. So we've talked to a music teacher because yep. uh, neither y- you or I are um, music teachers. And so that was very, very interesting because, you know, a lot of times we tend to just focus on those core subject areas. So it was really interesting to hear from teachers in other areas as well. An upcoming episode that we have is about geospatial mapping. Yeah, and that'd I be know, cool. I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to say anything more because I don't want to ruin it, but you're going to, I think y'all are going to find this really interesting. And one of the things that I like about the data bites is 
I think, Spencer, listeners, you can't see us, but we are not the same age. I know it's hard to tell. But Spencer, do you remember um, Sesame Street? Mm-hmm. Who are the people in your neighborhood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. That, that's a good. <laughs> yeah. So that I'm going to Photoshop their, our faces onto that for uh, the next so, but, data point. But that, that yes. idea came in my head one day when I was trying to figure out things that we can do. And I thought about not just who are the people in our neighborhood, mm-hmm. but what is the data in our neighborhood, right? Because yeah. you and I, uh, being part of data research and accountability, we interact with lots of data, but we don't interact with all of the data. Yeah. And so having that curiosity about what other data do people in our district encounter and then right. sharing that information with our listeners, I think is very important. Yeah, agreed. So we are, our format, is, as we said, is going to be pretty much the same. We're going to have episodes that air about every two weeks. We're going to take a small break over the holiday. And then after that, we will resume. So after this trailer, you can expect to hear us in about two weeks or so. And again, we are excited to begin. If you have questions, comments, or further notes, you can always reach us at www.wcpss.net forward slash data lit. As you know, we have always been using music from our yeah. students. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we are very excited to have new music. And we want to thank Jamal Wellman, who's a student at Rollsville Middle School for our theme music. That's great. Yes. For this one. So until uh, two weeks, say goodbye. All right. Take care.